God works in mysterious ways, but he ain't that mysterious. He's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Welcome back to another vlog. Currently, Corey and I are on our way to Baltimore. It's a Friday. It's like 10.30 in the morning. Um, took some PTO and just wanted to do something a little bit different. Just wanted to do something out of the ordinary because we both have never been to Baltimore before. I feel like I might have gone as a kid, but I'm really not sure. So yeah, I really don't know, honestly, but I definitely have not been as an adult. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to going and just kind of exploring and just doing something different because you know we're new to the east coast we moved here at the beginning of the pandemic and there's still so many areas we haven't explored yet we've gone to boston we've gone down to like the shore but oh we haven't gone to boston not boston <laughs> i didn't mean boston we've been to dc we've been out to the shore we want to go to Boston and then Baltimore is just like a pretty short drive. It's like under two hours. So yeah, thought that would be fun, but definitely want to go to Boston soon as well. Bay, what food do you want to get today? Uh, number one, a lobster roll. Number two, crab cake. Maybe uh, oyster. Oyster? We both never have had oysters before, so I don't know if I'm going to like it but I feel like we have to try it. So everyone's saying like Baltimore has really good seafood. So I think that's what we're gonna do today. Um, and then there's like a bakery that I feel like Corey found online that he wanted to try. So I'm really just down for the ride. And I wanted to bring y'all along today just because we're doing something different. Before we get into the rest of today's vlog and today's adventures, I wanna thank Faithful Counseling for sponsoring today's video. If you're not familiar with Faithful Counseling, they are an online Christian counseling service. And if you follow me for any period of time, you know that I am a huge, huge advocate for Christian counseling. It has made such a huge difference in my life and with my mental health and just how I manage my stress, my anxiety, and just just day-to-day -day feelings, you know, just general management of myself. It was very, very, very helpful for me. And I always recommend Christian counseling to others, you know, no matter what you're going through. I often look at everything as like a holistic approach. Yes, we should be praying. Yes, we should be talking to godly counsel, but godly counsel can also extend to a godly Christian counselor. So signing up through Faithful Counseling is super easy. It's very fast. All you have to do is fill out some information about yourself and what you're looking for and kind of what you want to focus on in your counseling. For me, I focus a lot on anxiety and that's what I got a lot of tools on. So you just fill out a questionnaire and then they pair you with somebody very quickly. Like I was paired with my counselor in I feel like an hour or less. So it was very fast and it's just a great resource. So if you are interested in learning more, be sure to check out my link below, which is faithfulcounseling.com slash Leah and you can get 10% off your first month. Y'all, we're just like really taken back at just how beautiful it is out here. It's not like this in Atlanta, huh, babe? Like with all those hills of trees? Um, not in a lot of areas. And then for me being from Illinois, like Illinois is a plain. So, I mean, you might see some, you're gonna see some trees, but it's not gonna be like super vast like that. So lately, Corey and I have been pretty busy we had we've had a lot going on and one thing that's important to us is just being sure making sure that we're taking time to connect to spend quality time together to try new things to continue to date one another and we love traveling to new places we love to eat we love to eat um and just like try new things so yeah i'm looking forward to trying the oyster i don't know if i like it honestly but we'll see um but yeah, I've been super busy. I've been trying to find like a good balance between like my real life and, you know, like my actual day to day stuff, like my job, keeping the house together, working out, cooking, you know, my my life. And then also with creating content as well. Like I feel like there's I'm trying to find the ideal balance. 
Um, but I did recently get promoted at my job and I have a new manager. So I've been like super busy. Um, so it's been like good busy, but it's hard to want to take out the camera every time I have free time. So yeah, that's something that I've been working on, just having balance. Um, but like I said, it, we've been good busy. So yeah, if there's any specific videos that you want to see from me or anything that you want to see from me and Corey, let me know down below. All right, babe, so random question on the spot. Do you, let me open this, get you some natural lighting. There we go. So random question on the spot. What piece of advice do you have for somebody who's waiting to find the right person, waiting for God's best for them? I think in general, you know, you want to be as patient as possible uh, because I do believe it is worse. It is it is much worse to be in, a, in the wrong relationship than to be in no relationship. Um, mm -hmm. You're single, you can be dependent on God, um, you know, and there's less distraction, less responsibility. And so that's just whether you're in a good or bad relationship. But if you're waiting for that, you have that desire, you feel like that desire to be with someone, to be married, that mm -hmm. is from God, then, you know, you want to be extremely patient. Rushing that process can get you in a lot of trouble. Um, the Bible shows story after story after story of individuals. Um, facing really bad consequences from being with the wrong person or being in a wrong type of relationship. Yeah. Um, I would say look to the scriptures to have the best understanding of the type of person you would look for before you meet somebody. Um, come up with some deal breakers, not just personal deal breakers, but biblical deal breakers. Yes. Um, so if you're a Christian individual, I would say um, being equally yoked is really important. So somebody who shares the same faith and is at a relatively similar spiritual maturity as you, I think is the most important. If um, not further. Well, it depends if oh, you're a man or a woman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So men and women, man and, men and women, I think those those are a little bit different. If you're a man, you're, I feel like you are more on the uh, offensive, I guess, and to a degree. You're where supposed you to lead your household. Where you should be more looking for that person you know what i'm saying whereas if you're a woman you may be playing more of a patient role you know kind of waiting to be found type of thing i think that's traditional and to a degree i think that's wise now for men and women you do have to be out in public settings to be exposed to to you know somebody so it's not that you're just at home waiting i mean how'd you meet me I think the way we met was a bit <laughs> unconventional. And I think it had a, it has a certain amount of challenges with us meeting yeah. via social media. It's, it was a, it's, it was more dangerous than I realized at that time. It, it did happen to work out, but like we always talk about, you never want to use somebody's personal antidotes as a formula to try to get the same results. That's and true. So I, I feel like the best case scenario was to meet somebody in, in person. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think the best case scenario is to be able to observe somebody who's not actively pursuing you romantically. Right. By the time somebody's actively pursuing you romantically, they're putting on a certain front, um, which is necessary, is yeah. fine, but it is not their truest, authentic self. And at the same time, by the time you're pursuing somebody or somebody's pursuing you romantically and you're actually interested, there's just certain spiritual, emotional, and physiological brain chemistry things going on that makes it very difficult to be as objective as you would have been on the front end, which is why I said, have those deal breakers on the front end so that if you do end up in a long-term relationship, um, you, re you reduce the risk of that being something that you should not be a part of. And I think you really got to stand firm on that. Like once you start compromising here and there, and once your emotions are in it, you're on a downhill trajectory. It's hard to put on the brakes when you're already in there. So. Right. You got to set that standard and stick to it before it gets to be super hard. You will find yourself in a place where you feel committed to somebody that you're not officially committed to. and Or find yourself in a space where somebody's committed to you. Where you are not formally committed. And they could see that, you know, I don't think this is the best for me, but because the emotions are tied up, because you've gotten used to things, that can be tough. Have um, those deal breakers and have boundaries. And stick to them. 
And if you realize you're not sticking to them, realize A, this person may not be for you, or B, it takes a little more honesty, transparency, you may not be right for this person. Right. The only thing worse, I feel like, than somebody like bringing you down is you bringing somebody else down because you're indecisive, because you don't know what you want to do, because you're walking in sin, because you're not operating in self-control, you haven't been patient, you haven't been disciplined. So you do got to be able to check yourself a little bit or right. else you can risk, you know, bringing somebody else down unnecessarily. And then by the time you realize this relationship is not for me, by the time they re realize this relationship is not for me, more so than just going your separate ways or and remaining friends, this feels almost more like a divorce. Right. Because you've crossed too many boundaries, you've said too many things, you've made too many commitments. It is really hard to keep you on this camera. And you're in it. <laughs> trying you know, to film so, this. So you definitely don't want to do that. You know, like I would say be extremely selective. And then do a self-examination. Ask some people around you, some wise counsel. Right. Do you think I'm ready for a mature, committed marriage? And then also listen to what people say. Like, listen to people's actual feedback. You can't accept advice if you're not willing to listen to people's true opinions and their thoughts. Like, everyone's not going to be a yes man. Like, sometimes people are going to tell you stuff you don't want to hear. But, like, it's important to make sure that you are relying on your support system so that they can tell you like about red flags that maybe they see or maybe the, what red flags they see about you. Like you need to keep working on you. So you don't want to go it alone. Like red flags to look for in a relationship. And just for context, these are not a list of things that are like list of toxic traits. You need to be on the lookout in the other person. Like this is not that. These are red flags that will come up in your relationship that you'll most likely be able to identify in your own heart first. First thing is Recognize when you are beginning to compromise, whether that be talking on the phone too late, talking on the phone too long, going out in, uh, to visit one another, spend time together in private. You recognize your standard for holiness is dropping to accommodate the normalcies or uh, normalities of whatever relationship you're in. You got to recognize that. You'll find a way to make excuses and say, oh, well, it's this, it's that. When you see that holiness drop, recognize that and, and separate yourself right. from that person. That doesn't mean I got to stop being everything, but there needs to be boundaries there in place. Recognize that 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 um, to that point, if you're doing a relationship God's way, I feel like it's going to look extremely um, abnormal. It's going to be pretty um, inconvenient, and, and probably will seem strange to most of the people that you know. You got to keep in mind it's a narrow path it's a narrow gate so if everybody's cool with it you're probably going in the wrong direction right um another red flag you know finding yourself coming up with excuses that you feel like is um for things that you typically wouldn't you know what i'm saying like something somebody does um you don't want to end up in that relationship where you're committed to enduring the struggle I see a lot of that, like where somebody's like, well, this person's doing this, this person's doing that, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that. And now you just have this sense or this commitment to endure. To see it through. To see it through, you know, because, well, I don't think it's fair that, you know, I don't want to talk with her because she's a little promiscuous. I don't think it's fair that I want to cut him off just because he, you know, likes all these pictures on Instagram that I wouldn't like. Well, I don't want to cut her off because she uses this type of language. I don't want to cut him off because he doesn't really seem that kind. Like I just, it just doesn't, I don't right. want to be holier than now. I don't want to be so, so, so self-righteous. Listen, be self-righteous. You know what I'm saying? Like air on the side of self-righteousness. Like most often the people, what's the other option in our community? You know, we're so worried about being, I don't want to be perceived as religious, a Pharisee, a Sadducee. Trust me, you're most likely not too holy. You know what I'm saying? So like when right. a joke between me and Leah, we talk to you all the time. Look, you start being too holy i'll let you know you know what i'm saying because that's just typically not the case now we do see that there are people who are very religious sadducee pharisee and that's not you that that's not you you know what i'm saying so just be aware of that i think you know uh red flags is nobody around you really seems to support this relationship the people who truly have showed you that they love and care for you over the test of time right you know what i'm saying maybe not somebody you know that's resentful towards the opposite sex or maybe bitter or something like that but if it's your, your 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 best friends, your family, you know, recognize if you realize, you know, this isn't a person that I, I really want to bring around to people that are most intimate in my life, all that type of stuff. So you want to be worried about or be concerned with those things and be in prayer and be in the Bible more than anything. All right. Well, thank you for that mini sermon. I don't know <laughs> if I'd call it that. I would call it me. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I wanted to just kind of like put him on the spot and ask him a question that I thought that might be helpful to y'all 
you know, regardless of what you're going through, even if you're not single and you're you're in a relationship or you're married or whatever the case may be, like it can apply to anybody. And I agree with what he's saying. I think it's important to hold yourself to a higher standard because from my observations, when people start kind of wavering on their standards, it's like a downhill from there. Like you really can't let sin creep in and think you're gonna get all, all that God has for you. Like you're gonna get what sin has for you, which is not what God wants for you. You just cannot have your cake and eat it too, like from a spiritual standpoint. So keep your standards high. They're there for a reason, you know, and you really want to make sure that whatever you're doing is in alignment with the Bible because you can't go wrong with that. But if you start operating based off what you want and your feelings and your desire and your flesh, you're not going to get God's best for you. So, yeah, I hope that y'all enjoyed this little car chat. My arm started to hurt, so if the footage was a little shaky, apologies for that. I honestly need to get like a car tripod. Two bonus tips. Oh, okay. All right, so just two bonus tips really quick, all right? If your relationship takes a turn towards sexual immorality and that's in action, words, or thoughts, you need to take a step back and probably multiple steps back. Like, I don't want to hear it. The whole idea of, oh, I'm just really desiring godly, marital interactions. No, nope. don't want to hear it. And you know what? I'll just leave it at that. If, if, if that's where that's going, you need to take steps back. You talking about sexual? Yes. Gotcha. Like, there's no excuses, really. It's really not. Yeah, I think sometimes people say, it's like, oh, it's a gray area. The Bible doesn't talk about this, doesn't talk about that. And it's like, I feel like it's pretty clear. You know what? Here's my second tip. I okay. wasn't even gonna go there. If you, last one for real. If you met this person in sin, don't try to say God brought this to you, right? So let's think about this. If you were in sin when you met this person, meaning, oh, I was dating somebody else, but then I met you. Oh, I met you and you're with somebody else, but you know, I know that we're supposed to be together. That's or probably were not cheating. it. And that's what I mean. Like obviously, you could meet somebody in a casual setting, work right. with somebody, know somebody in, the, in just in society. But if you met in sin. You know that's probably not God's doing. If you was on a site you shouldn't have been on at a time you shouldn't have been on doing some stuff, like that's probably not it. Right. God works in mysterious ways, but he ain't that mysterious. He's pretty straightforward. <laughs> you say he ain't that mysterious. He's really not. That's funny. He's beyond us, but not in a sinister way. Right. Like he's not like plotting in that sense. He's orchestrating. Yeah, I do feel like sometimes people try to like go off the beaten path and then sprinkle a little God on it like Ooh, God did that maybe you did that and then it looks like you did it <laughs> the other point that, I, that I'm trying to make is that you don't meet the person that God has for you or a person the type of person God wills for you to be with while you're in sin so for example if you're in a relationship and now you're you know you're, you're testing the waters on the dating site and, and find somebody that's not God and so the point is, you're not going to find, you know, the a person God wants for you while you're in a wrong relationship. But you definitely can miss a person that's God's will for you when you're in the wrong relationship. It can most definitely be a waste of your time. Right. There are losses. Like, because we almost make it seem like, oh, well, when you're a God, you can't lose. You can lose. You can lose ultimately, royally, definitely. And God can redeem those things in a sense you know he can redeem it in full in a very literal sense but he can also redeem it in you know giving you a second chance giving you something else finding satisfaction hey, you used to always say the plan b remember like the god's god's best is plan a he can give you like a plan b or c right there is god's perfect will right where if you were doing everything that god called for you to do sin was not a factor in this world there is a perfect will of god and you want to try to get as close to that as possible there's also a permissible will if you look at all the tragedies that happen in this world that gives you an insight on how god allows us to operate right think of this like tragic things that happen god allows those things and if god allows those things he will allow you to wedge yourself to the wrong person right and now like i said both of y'all are faithful you're both trying i do believe god can do a miracle i believe uh, uh, you know, Lee and I are very similar to that. We don't have 
the perfect relationship and we have not been the most perfect people but when you align yourself with God and humble yourself I think you can get a pretty good outcome and right. God can then give you the desires of your heart and have you to become one with your wife or with your husband right. where you truly grow to love each other more and more but you definitely can get that wrong and when you're with somebody who's not even equally yoked to at least be trying in the same arena as you you will be miserable and it'll be an uphill battle because I feel like you know, I've even known people that are like, he's not a Christian, but he's everything else. And I'm like, that is a really big deal because you're choosing a more difficult path. That's all I got to say. And somebody, you know, sometimes somebody needs to hear this. And if you do, here it is. And I'm not talking to married people, right? But for the, for if you're unmarried and you know you're in a wrong relationship and you just know it, Here's your, here's your confidence. Here's your encouragement. Let it go. Move on. It doesn't have to be an explanation. And, and you, yes, you may very well feel bad for bringing this person all the way down this road. I've talked to several men, and I've been a man like that, where you, you know, you've gone so far in a relationship, at this point, you just feel guilty because you've gone too far not to see it through. No. If you're not married, you know, those commitments, there, there is no commitment. There is no covenant. You, know you have what I'm the saying? right to walk away. Right. And you have the right to be humble enough and repentant enough to tell somebody as bad as I feel breaking this off my biggest sin was bringing you all the way down this road I should have never brought you down here now that we're here I gotta do you know I gotta I gotta repent which is an extreme abrupt, abrupt change in the plan but I gotta repent once while there's still time to do it right that's good I think sometimes it's hard to let something go but once you gone so far down a path that initial like nudging from the holy spirit saying and eh, this isn't right this is not the person for you when you override that and keep going down that path the wrong path you make walking away so much harder on yourself so that's why it's important to keep your standards high you want to avoid unnecessary heartbreak for yourself and also for the person that you're dealing with you really want to do things God's way because that is how you will get God's best if you're single cherish that be thankful for that because you're not in a wrong relationship and there's still time for you to grow in your maturity to grow in wisdom and to be in alignment with what God has for you from observing people that I've seen like you might start off single and maybe dissatisfied or lonely and you really want somebody so you kind of idolize being in a relationship and having somebody even though that could be your godly desire it can still become an idol to the point where you are lacking contentment in your season of singleness and i think that's very common but let's say you end up getting into a relationship or a situationship with somebody that you know is not god's best for you and you settle if it's very bad for you it can take you from feeling sad and lonely about being single to being downright downtrodden and way beneath that because you're dealing with the wrong person. And not only can it make you feel so much worse, it also distracts you from meeting God's best. There's so many negative things that come from messing with the wrong people. And obviously keeping you from God's best is, is a big part of it. Another big part of it is all the time that you waste, all the energy that you waste. You know, if you're giving your body to somebody like, and and you and you know that the Holy Spirit is telling you that this is not the person for you, and you know that your standard is to not be having premarital sex or anything in that, in that uh, realm, you're wasting time and energy and effort, and you're also can be creating soul ties and just making your path more challenging than it has to be. You know, I've seen people be in relationships where they're unequally yoked, it's not the right relationship and it has them almost idolizing that single season like you know i wish i could get back to that like i have more peace i have more of that so it's like you have to understand that the grass is not always greener on the other side you don't want to just be in any relationship you want to be in a relationship that god has for you and there's fruit that comes from that like if you're seeing no fruit you're fruit. you're seeing bad fruit you're just seeing all this different stuff like wipe off your glasses Make the decision that should have made on the front end and walk away. You want to listen to the Holy Spirit because honestly, that's the, the secret sauce to it all. The Holy Spirit will let you know. The Holy Spirit will convict you. You will have thoughts like, 
I don't know, this isn't sounding right. He says he's a Christian, but I can't really tell. Or he says this, but why is he pressuring me here? If somebody's always trying to push you to go against your godly standards, that's not the right person for you. So yeah, I don't know. Obviously, Corey and I could talk about this forever, but I hope that this portion of the video minister to somebody out there because I know that that desire to be in a relationship can be so strong that it can be blinding. And I just don't, I hate seeing people struggle with being unequally yoked because it can be very challenging. I don't know, we kind of wrapping up, but the thing is two things that are just clear, run the other way. If they're not equally yoked, you got to move on. You know, you're not being holier than thou. You're not telling them that you're a bad person because you don't believe in this and that, but it's just not profitable for you. Can it work out in a sense, depending on what your idea of workout is? Maybe, you know what I'm saying? We're not saying it won't work out no way. But that's a clear indication if you're trying to follow God's ways to go the other direction. And the second is this whole thing is sexual immorality. Like I said, in action, in, in word, or in the mind. Like, that's not godly. That is warrant. That's enough um, warrant for you to, to move on, even if it's momentary, to get yourself under control. Right. You know? God isn't in it. Yeah, like, I would say, like, strong, almost uncontrollable, unrelenting sexual urge is not from God. Like, I've heard so many people that I've talked to, and I've even convinced myself at times, just like, oh, this is a godly desire. I desire godly sex. If you're single, you're not desiring godly sex. That's lust. That just is what it is. We all have urges, but at the same time, you can tell when that's, when that, at that a certain point becomes ungodly. Be honest with yourself. And that's what, that's the real, I think, the, the, the toughest of all, to be honest with yourself and repent and right. admit your sinfulness. Be honest with yourself. Do. Be honest with yourself. Listen to the Holy Spirit and actually obey. So for lunch, we went to Thames Oyster House and we wanted to try oysters for the first time ever. And I'm not even going to hold y'all we both did not like them like you can just tell by the look on his face and his eyes like oh it was so nasty but the food was actually really good so what we enjoyed our lunch um but yeah definitely never doing oysters again let me know down below are you a fan of oysters So we just left uh, the Lexington market and we got a few things that we're going to try. Crab cakes from Faley's. I think it's called Faley's. And they then I got way overpriced. Then I got some burgers cookies. You know what I'm saying? So really shocked at the price. It seemed like they are about, what, $20, $25, $25 a pop per for, crab cake. Per crab cake. We got two crab cakes and it was $50. Yeah, and like no sides, no nothing. Just, just the cake, just the crab cake. This is what we're talking about. Now, $25? Does it look good? Yes. Mostly crab, yes. But That's 20, a lot. But Thirty dollars is a lot. That's a lot. I, so, I thought it was a typo. Yeah, I thought she said fifteen. She said <laughs> fifty-three. So, yeah, we're gonna see what that's about. And then we also tried um, burgers, cookies. And so I'll show y'all that a little bit later. But we're gonna get a real reaction from Leah. See how she thinks um, this crab okay. cake tastes. So there's two sauces. There's this is like a white, like tartar try it make sure it's not horseradish it's tartar that tastes good okay okay and then this sauce like some still, sort of cocktail yeah, sauce yeah i'm good on the cocktail sauce let's just try it as it is first i mean it is really good <laughs> i like it better than the one we had earlier yeah we did have it earlier it's definitely better yeah better flavor overall yeah i mean i guess if you're coming maybe just get one because we really didn't need two but it's kind of like an impulse decision not knowing how many to get and if you're coming to baltimore i would suggest getting one if you're hungry get something else i like that i like this one yeah that you does have a great tartar? taste no i really don't like tartar sauce i'll try cocktail when i eat mine okay i like it good for a crab cake I would give it like a 10 out of 10. There we go. Man, let me go in there and it's leave a bigger It's very, tip. very rare that I give a 10. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip. I, when I ordered, they, they sent the order back. And then it said, here's an option to leave a tip. Once I left the tip, she yelled back there again and said, take your time. I'm assuming take your time is some sort of indication like, hey, they tip. Go ahead and hook them up with the best we got. <laughs> so... 
<laughs> Maybe leave it till. I like it though. You have some tartar on there? No, I didn't put it on. You want to try it? It didn't taste bad. I think it's on. It wasn't on it. Residue. This is good. Yeah, that kind of smacks. We're gonna finish this, and then we'll be back with the cookies. <laughs> All right. So now, what do we have? Uh, we have this mega slice of red velvet cake, and this is um from that bakery. I forgot the name, but it smells really good, homemade, and they gave me two for the price of one. Right. For no good reason. They said they this one was too small. This is the big one. This thing's big. Yeah, they gave him two, even though he paid for one. Must be nice. Now I'm a red cake. Red velvet cake on the sewer, so I'll let y'all know. You ready? Mm-hmm. And be honest too. Let me try to be nice because I gave it to you. Moisture, really good. Density, really good. Um, the cake, good taste. I will say, it doesn't taste the most homemade of homemade, but it tastes more homemade than like the store. Yeah. Like, cause he'll often go to like the grocery store and go to their bakery section. So it tastes more homemade than those. The icing is really sweet. It's not a strong cream cheese flavor, but it is really sweet. Um, what would you give it solid. as a rating? Oh, good eight. Okay. Let you try that. But like, even like with how there's all this cake part, I would like it to be cut in half. Like, it's just so much. I don't know if they can see like how it's high thick. it is. Yeah, yeah, it is a thick piece of cake. So, from and this is an end piece, so it really would be even thicker than that. Per so I'm gonna just go like halfway with it and not even go all the way down. Okay, let's see. My teeth do not like the feeling of sugar. It makes them hurt. Okay. But. I think it tastes really good. I agree. I give it like an eight. Okay. What's your what's your rationale for that? My eight? only issue is like the frosting. Very sugary. It's very grainy. Like they just dumped a ton of sugar. So. Yeah, it's not creamy, creamy uh, cream cheese icing. It's a very sugary. Cr it's very sugary. Right. It's like when like I'm biting like, on, I'm biting on like sugar. What do you call it? Granules. Maybe. So. Yeah, but other than that, it's like he said. Uh, that not, not yet, not okay. yet. So what we have here is burgers, cookies. To my knowledge, this is um, a Baltimore specialty. Um, the cookie looks really unimpressive. It's a very unassuming cookie. It's supposed to be like a Let's see it. pretty simple shortbread type cookie with like a fudge on top. It's kind of like white on this side, fudgy on this side, like very homemade looking. Not the prettiest cookie, but give it a shot because we're here. Okay. Um, it's very fudgy. The cookie's really soft and very sweet. If you like fudge, I think you would like this cookie. Um, I hate fudge, so I'm gonna pass. I'm not the biggest to necessarily maybe come back on this, but. Rating. I would say, 6.5 or 7 for a cookie. Pick your rating. Between 6.5 slash 7. 6.5 slash so 7. So would it be a 6.75? No. Because you got you to gotta represent that 6.5 to let them know y'all really almost didn't make the cut. But the 7 to say I respect the hustle. So it's not a bad cookie. But it really just tastes like a piece of fudge with a cookie type crust at the bottom. So. Gotcha. So this is the last stop. So this is what we got from the Black Owned Bakery and it's Codata Bake Shop. So we got the birthday cake, cupcake, apple crumble cupcake, strawberry cheesecake, and a peach cobbler cheesecake. So yeah, we just kind of drove back in the car with this stuff um, in the back seat. And this is it for our vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one.